another um, viewpoint on all this that we've talked about many times um, before, just so it's on the floor. I think uh, the um, uh, conclusions being jumped to in the New Scientist article and a lot of other places are just naive, and um, there's an awful lot of confusion about all this. So let me give you my viewpoint, and you can react. Sure. Um, two entangled particles take off in different directions. Um, they are in a state that's no less real than anything with a simple up or down spin. They're in a very definite state that's a superposed state. And in a, in a Hilbert space, that's just a vector at 45 degrees rather than at zero or 90 degrees, exactly as determined or and exactly as real uh, as anything else. It's just not in on our basis. It's in a definite state of superposition. Now, it is true that when you measure that interaction, changes it to be in an up state or a down state in a, in a binary system. Um, but consciousness, in my view, has nothing whatsoever to do with it, and von Neumann's simply wrong about this. Um, so the leap that I would object to is the one that says um, these phenomena, which you've pretty much correctly described, uh, imply that the consciousness creates the universe. Um, reality that's being discussed is a very naive um, definition of reality, uh, I would say, and um, our interactions do have something to do with what happens in the universe, obviously, um, but it's all out there and it's real whether we interact with it or not, and the interactions that are involved in quantum measurement are a lot more uh, uh, prosaic than, than uh, are sometimes portrayed. Thanks. Well, it's certainly something we're not going to settle here because it's a very deep issue. I'd like to point out, though, that the, the notion that you have a spin that objectively exists and that you simply measure out here, that sort of runs afoul of the idea, or the, the, the fact, I should say, that whenever, regardless of which direction you choose to measure the spin in, it's going to be, say, one half h bar. It's going to be either up or down. It's not going to be at some angle. You're not going to measure some fraction of one half h bar or h bar, whichever the spin is, is of the particle. So it's not, it's, it's, you are creating a reality here when you make a measurement because the, the object would not know that you're going to measure in this direction, therefore it has to be aligned this way. It can't be that way or that way because you're always going to measure either an up or a down. You're never going to measure a fraction of that. I have a question about whether you've begun to connect these theories with human identity, you know, who we are in relationship to the quantum world and how we relate to one another. <laughs> well, in, in the book, The God Theory, I do make some suggestions along those lines. I mean, that's not the, the point of this talk. I didn't want to preach about my metaphysics of God, but since you asked the question, I'll, I'll say a sentence or two about that. I think that basically it's the, the, the rationale behind the universe is that there's a consciousness that created the universe because that consciousness wanted to experience what it's like to live in that universe as you, as me, as the animals, as the plants, as whatever aliens exist in the Andromeda galaxy. The point of it is to create a, a universe in which life can arise following the laws of Darwinian evolution. Good point. Darwinian evolution is a key a aspect of this. Life can evolve and that consciousness can experience its potential, which is the experience that we're having right here in this room now, in part. So that's my metaphysical interpretation. What, how it relates to quantum physics at any level deeper than what I've said here today, I wouldn't know. And this is my, my attempt to show that quantum physics, at least if it, quantum physics cannot prove the existence of God, cannot do that, but it does certainly point to the idea that consciousness is a, is a key element in the creation of reality, and with, with uh, apologies to Dick Schaub. How does perception affect the consciousness of reality? In the equation of consciousness creating reality, how does perception affect it? Well, I'm standing on your head. Is it spin up or down? I'm taking perception as being the what consciousness does in the making of the measurement process. I mean, that's part of consciousness, and the consciousness, consciousness being active in this process, making an observation is perception. I don't understand the question beyond that. It's spin, spinning whichever way you choose to measure it. If you choose to measure the spin in this direction, it's going to be either up or down. It's not going to be some fraction of that. It's going to be either up or down. Very mysterious. You know, this is not what you think. If you spin, take, take a globe, you know, spinning around its axis, and you tilt it in various directions. If you choose to measure its spin in, say, this direction, but it's spinning in that one, you'll get some fractional 
some fractional value for what the projection of the, uh, this axis is on that one. But you make a quantum spin measurement, it's always going to be up or down. Regardless of which direction you measure, you get to choose. So, uh, like, if there is a crowd of people and there's a rock in the center or something, and everybody's looking at it, if someone looked away, it, the rock wouldn't disappear. So, it's like you have to have no one watching something for it, like, kind of for it not to really be there. Does that make sense? Well, Einstein asked the same sort of question because Einstein didn't much care for quantum physics. And so he asked one of his colleagues, well, do you really think the moon is not there when you don't look at it? And he, was, he really didn't like quantum physics. But as it turns out, Einstein was proven wrong because the Bell inequality demonstrated that the einstein podolsky rosen paradox was indeed mistaken, and so was Einstein. Now, you know, the question of whether things are not there when we're not looking, I wouldn't want to go that far. I mean, clearly, that's, that's naive. That doesn't happen. Though at the quantum level, at the quantum level, it certainly seems, seems to happen because things don't actually get put in their proper place until you make the measurement. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm forced to say that there's a mystery here when you try to extrapolate this to our, this, the state of the universe and the state of, of ourselves, a mystery that we'll just have to live with, but it certainly points that way. Unfortunately, I, I'm sure there were a lot more interesting questions, but we're all out of time, so thank you, Bernie. Thank you. Thank you.